Welcome back to my channel. Yes, I know it's been a while again. I am sorry, but I wanted to film a get ready with me. Um, I've been really kind of digging bright colors again because it's getting warmer and we're close to summer, but not not quite there yet um, and you guys know if you follow my channel how much I love Juvia's Place and their palettes so um, today I want to predominantly work with the festival palette and masquerade which I think is kind of awesome because to me they're both very similar um, as far as brightness and warmth and just kind of getting a bold summer festival type of look so yeah Let's work with these, and then I'm also gonna be using a little bit of my Jaclyn Hill palette just because it's Jaclyn Hill and I love it. Um, so that's gonna be the look for the eyes today. And then as far as the face, we're just gonna kinda work through it, hopefully quickly. <laughs> I know I tend to like talk a lot, um, but one thing I picked up recently that I really, really love is the Soleil Tan de Chanel. And it looks like this, and I think it retailed for like $59. It's pretty pricey, pretty bougie, but it is an awesome kind of cream to gel finish um, tanner, basically. It's, it's a bronzer, and I really like it with adding warmth to the skin. Um, another product I am loving and swear by is the uh, Mineral Powder in Rich Vanilla from Laura Mercier because I love being able to just add that layer of warmth with a sheer medium coverage and just kind of create dimension on the face. So with that being said, um, I did receive a really cool primer um, sample at Sephora. This is the Illuminating Extra Bobbi Brown Hydrating Balm and I really, really like this. And I also love my No Pore Problem from Touch and Soul. So I'm gonna put the pore problem on first and just use a little bit of that to kind of work it into where I have fairly visible pores, which is in my cheek area, my nose, and down in like the chin. And I like to mix them because I like the benefit of blurring out my skin with this, but I like the illumination and hydration of this. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that now and focus this Bobbi Brown product a little bit more along the perimeter of the face. So um, we've officially kicked off like a true springy summer weather here in the south it is now um it went from like this gorgeous 60 70 degree weather and it was like 30 40 in the morning but like 70 afternoon to this hot humid 75 85 90 degree weather and pretty much that's gonna stay i think at this point we'll have probably occasional you know days where it's not quite as warm but um we've officially reached that point where it's like summer for us. So um, with that being said, it can be tricky makeup wise. My thing is you have to know your skin really well to be able to kind of tinker and cater things to it. One thing I really love, you guys know, is the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion. So what I find is using a really good illuminating or hydrating base and then also working with long wear formulations really tends to work for my skin and stay put. So I go a little bit deeper on my Tinny Dole and then more of my true skin color with Flawless Fusion just because I like to have a little balance and I feel like if you do it too light, it's super pale, but if you go too deep or add too much dimension, then of course you're gonna look orange and muddy. So I love just the balance of these two together. And I'm going to be using an It Cosmetics brush. This is the Bye Bye Pores. It says it's a powder brush, but I actually really love it to buff in my liquid foundation. Um, it's just super duper soft and fluffy, but it's also very densely packed. So I feel like it applies the liquids well enough to where it shears it a little bit, but it doesn't completely smear the foundation. It actually really buffs it into the skin. And because this is a little bit deeper with the Tinny Doll, I'm gonna also blend down into my chest area into the neck 
And because these are really long wear and transfer proof, it's easy to blend into those areas like the decollete and all that because you don't have to worry about it getting on your clothes and transferring or if you hug somebody, it's not gonna go all over the place. And right now I'm just taking my beauty blender with a little bit of the lighter foundation. And I'm gonna bring that into the center of my face and then buff out into the outside corners. And this is just kind of the final step. I like to do this after applying with a brush because I really just want everything to be smooth. So lately, I feel like my eyes are just so tired. I don't know what it is. I, we are super busy. We've been like dealing a lot with um, sports and school. It's like end of the year school. So everything is, well, number one, everything's money. The school wants like all your money towards the end of the year. Um, everything is like a fundraiser, a PCA event, blah, blah, blah. So it's just like constant, like nonstop doing this, doing that. And then of course, my son plays um, baseball now in sports so that's been really fun and his team is like I think they're like four and one or five and one so super awesome and then you know throw on a second child and a job so life just gets really crazy like super crazy um, I'm gonna use my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer today because like I said I feel like I look tired just all the time And one thing I'm loving right now too is the Kylie Cosmetics. Um, this is the color Bone in her skin concealer and it has more of a pinky peach undertone. So I just kind of add a little bit into my under eye area and my forehead because I do have a dark spot on my forehead and of course dark circles under my eyes. And I'm gonna start to blend that out with a G38 from Morphe and then we'll go back in with our beauty sponge. Let's start here. But yeah, so life's crazy. And um, even with all that's going on, I'm like, I tried to pick up a second job. So I've been like applying to jobs like crazy because um, we've just been having a lot of mergers with my company and um, just different budget issues. And you know, a girl has got to work and make money. So yeah, it's just been like, crazy trying to get hours in and make that money so um yeah I, I applied for a couple of jobs and just kind of in the processing processing the process of interviewing and just trying to see what's a good fit um while still being able to maintain my routine that I have with my kids and my job and you know all these different things so it's just crazy um, trying to find time and then of course I'm still doing my gym routine so I am back at the gym and I've been going daily I'm probably gonna go later too after this it's a lot to be interesting going with like a full-on drag look to uh, work out <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of wearing a lot of makeup to the gym. I usually wear like just moisturizers or tinted moisturizer. Um, but every now and then, you know, you gotta go from work and do what you gotta do. Obviously, you guys know like I have anxiety and um, it's not just the, oh, I'm always nervous. It's like, you know, actual clinical, like diagnosed anxiety. Um, you know, not like the MTV kind that you see like every young child has now where like everyone's got an issue just because somebody doesn't like them or love them. Like, no, this is like legit general anxiety disorder and panic attacks. But um, working out is has definitely been helping me tremendously. Oh my God, like what is on my eye right now? Okay. Um, it's just 
really helping me to kind of find comfort in myself again, feel more confident, um, obviously taking risks. You know, people that suffer with anxiety, we want to be social and busy a lot of the times, but because of what we go through, it does kind of prevent you from feeling comfortable in your skin to be able to get out there and do things. So being out there, being busy, um, you know, it just helps kind of occupy your mind. And um, I've just found like a really good trainer that's helped me um, more on a personal level than anything else. Like, you know, just in a way of inspiring me and keeping me motivated and disciplined. Um, you know, my trainer is not like one of those boot camp types that yells at you and tells you every bad thing that you are and how fat you are and stuff like that. No, but um, yeah, like he's just really good at motivational speaking and just the way he approaches things. And I just, I really respect that. Um, and you know, you'll find like people like that, their voices kind of get stuck in your head, especially when you're having a tough day or like an off day. And those are the kind of people you need in your life to just pick you back up again and make you realize like, no, I can do this. I got this, you know, and the days where I feel the worst are usually the days I know I have to work out like my body, like, no, my body is telling me I get back to work, Nicole, get to the gym, hustle, no excuses today. He always says to my trainer, wouldn't you rather be sore than sorry? <laughs> and like what, you know, the first few times my smart ass was like, uh, no, no, I'll be sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry right now. But you know, when you think about it, yeah, it's a good sore. It's a, I worked hard and I kicked my own ass sore, but I'm going to appreciate and enjoy the results. And I love it. I love knowing too that I have a chance to be more healthy. That's really what it comes down to because the number on the scale could honestly mean two shits to me. Knowing I'm healthy and I'll be around longer for my kids, that's important to me. Okay, so I have set my face with my Dermablend Pro. Um, is that what it's called? I don't even know. Derma, Dermablend Professional Loose Setting Powder. Um, I usually use RCMA, but I've had Dermablend in my kit for a while and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to using this and I actually really like it with the formulations that I've been using on my face um, so yeah let's get into eyeshadows I'm working with my um, B track brushes I call them because the A tracks the ones that I normally will use and put on repeat are um, cleaning and drying and I'm kind of working with the B sides so hopefully we'll get what we want you know how like you just have that group of brushes that you just love so all right, I'm gonna start with uh, the Morphe palette and I'm gonna go into a BH um, crease brush. And I'm gonna work with these two um, kind of lighter frosted colors first. That's gonna kind of be the, the framework. And that's gonna go corner of the eye into the brow bone and then whatever's left, I just kind of dust it across the entire lid. I'm just going to quickly dust off that brush and then start working into this kind of softer, more like creamsicle color. Um, it's like a really pretty kind of golden orange tone and definitely want to tap that out. It's extremely pigmented, this color, but working with that same fluffy brush, I'm just going to start from the outside corner and kind of like pull it in, but kind of go straight in instead of curving the brush. So. We're kind of like curving it a little bit on the outside of the crease and then pulling it more straight. And then um, you can also take your brush a little bit straighter instead of on an angle. I just kind of like like the finish of this lately where more of the color placement is on the outside and less on the inside. Now we're going to say goodbye to Jacqueline. See you later, girl. Good night kind of pop into the festival palette right now and use this color. I think it's pronounced Oro and it's kind of a little bit more goldeny mustardy than the color in the Jaclyn palette. Um, but I really love this color and I want to intensify the crease a little more. So I'm going to use that same brush 
and again work from the outside and then just kind of gently buff it towards the inside corner and it's really important like when you use the same kind of a brush make sure you tap out your excess make sure you're wiping off in between as you go just because you really want the colors to kind of stand out each on their own but also be able to blend seamlessly and if you're not tapping out and you're putting too much of one color it's not going to really blend together to give you that kind of a finish all right now we're going to drop down to something a little bit smaller i'm going to go into a morphe mb23 and it's still in that kind of fluffy crease crease <laughs> it's still in that fluffy crease brush category but now we're going to pop into this really pretty color Manwu, Manwu, I don't know. It's this awesome kind of, I guess more like a salmon color. I, mean, I always think of friends when I say that, like Ross. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google it, you guys. But he has like this salmon colored shirt and everyone calls it pink, but he's like, it's salmon. Yeah. So basically it's like a salmon pink. And we're gonna pop that now, same way into the crease. I'm gonna come down a little bit lower into the crease though and hug that outside corner. And then of course, like pull straight across into that brow area. So you can see the dimension now with both colors. We're still getting hints of that kind of creamsicle color, but now we're getting more of that salmon color in there as well. One thing I should note too is with each color, I'm also kind of circling on the outside V so I'm not only working the crease, but I'm also kind of working this outside corner here as well. Let's, let's use that B23 again one more time. Let's just kind of clean it off. I'm gonna go into this really pretty pink in the Festival palette. I think it's Irigi, and it's right in the center there. Let's work that on a fluffy brush first, and then we'll taper down. Same concept, almost like you're placing it right on top of that salmon color. I'm gonna go into an M514 and you can see it's kind of like stained pink just because it's like that white goat hair, but I promise I cleaned it. <laughs> These brushes just kind of stay so stained. That's how pigmented Juvia's is. Like, I'll actually go ahead, like say I go to the gym and then I'll come home, I'll use my uh, makeup removing balm from Clinique and then I'll also go in the shower and use a, another um, cleanser and I will still find residue of pink on my eyes. It's just that crazy. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna pop into Masquerade and we're gonna go into this kind of warm, grapey, purple color Zobo and mix that with that Irigi pink, okay? So I'm gonna take that both on this smaller brush and kind of blend the colors a little bit on the back of my hand then taking this brush I want to come in now on an angle and get this more into that actual crease so this is the only one we're really going to actually hug the crease with because this is going to add a lot more definition and we're going to come around the side of the eye as well but then we're going to kind of slant the brush up again and pull the color up into the rest of the colors. So it's almost like you're cutting out your crease this way, but then, like I said, you're pulling upward and blending the colors so that this way it looks like it's, it looks like it's all one color. So then when all is said and done, I'm gonna go back in with that BH brush and I've actually cleaned it, wiped it clean. And I'm just gonna go back in, starting from the outside and just kind of pull these colors together. So using that same M514, I'm gonna go back into the grape color and that pink and kind of mix them again. And starting from underneath now, under the lash line from the outside corner start pulling this color along the lashes and I like this brush because it is dense it is small 
but it's still a crease brush in that it's kind of fluffy so it's not putting it too too heavy but it's it's really great for smoking out the lower lash line so if you guys follow me on um, social media I recently posted about um, the makeup industry and just kind of how as rewarding and fun as it is it's you know there's just a lot of shady characters in it and um, I recently went out for a job and um, I'm just gonna go back in with a little bit of that Oro color now that mustardy color anyway I went out for a position and the reason I went for it was because the person that was heavily um, influencing towards you know the actual position I guess like an influencer towards that who was going to be hired for that position um, that particular individual told me like you know I really think you'd be a great candidate I like your work ethic I like your talent I think you have a lot to offer yada yada so it just seemed like a really cool fit and I was like you know what I'm gonna go out for it I wasn't really looking to add um, more hours at the time but I was looking definitely to further my career and um, I thought it would be a great opportunity especially to you know just put my name out there and give it a shot and um, she was like you know I really want you for the position so I felt really good about it and um, I didn't you know I never take anything as a shoe in I always kind of assume like you know it is what it is I'm gonna try my best whatever happens happens but it did seem like there was a, a, a larger possibility that this was gonna work out. And um, so I you know, did what I had to do and I waited and I waited and I waited. Um, I'm gonna go in with uh, really quick some liquid gold from e.l.f. Cosmetics. These were those kind of molten gold eyeshadows and um, work this across the lid space now. Anyway, um, going back to that. So I went out for the position and I was super, excited you know just waiting waiting for them to call for the interview because um, I figured even though it felt like a shoe in in a way I knew that I would have to interview and prove my point and prove myself and I was totally okay with that because I, I actually enjoy interviews I like talking to people and um, you know I do get anxious but somehow it, it works out so Long story short, I waited and waited and waited, kept checking in, asking about the position, have you heard anything, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I came to find out, not even through this first party, through a third party, that um, I was not selected. Number one, for the position, and number two, to even, you know, interview or audition you know whatever you want to use the word and god I was crushed you guys I was like you know really I really I guess I got my hopes up and um I was really excited and thinking like you know I'm gonna interview again I didn't know I would get the position but just the thought of being able to interview let people get to know who I am know my story know what I'm what I'm looking for yada yada and it was not a pretty sight that way. Um, it did not work out how I wanted. Found out, like I said, through a third party, never even got an official, like, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry this happened to you. Um, it was basically just told, it is what it is. Um, this other girl got the position and I was under the impression that I was the only one up for the position because, um, there wasn't a whole lot of hype around it. And usually, you know, people kind of promote from within, but that did not happen. So I really felt let down and crushed and, you know, just negative for a couple of days. Um, I'm going in with a dojwa, a dogwa. Um, this is in the festival palette and it's a beautiful kind of champagne -y soft gold. So I'm gonna go in with this and we're gonna cover that on top of that liquid gold now. Um, but anyway, I really felt like this person just kind of reeled me in and got my hopes up. And then I was mad at myself because I'm like, you know, 
I had expectations and expectations are never a good thing because they lead to disappointment a lot of the time. And it was just a tricky situation because at the end of the day, I didn't have control over it. You know, whoever they choose, they're going to choose. But I just felt very um, led on. And especially since the person that had me go out for the position, like I said, they had a huge pull in who was hired. And they never even chose to interview me, let alone hire me. So it made me realize just how you really have to guard yourself. And in this type of an industry, like, you know, it, it can get a little bit jaded. It can get um, a little saturated. And you have to kind of always be on top of your game, know your stuff, know who's around you, know your competition, um, and don't trust people, unfortunately. You know, don't trust that because you know somebody or someone recommends you or wants you or kind of pulls you in that you're automatically going to get that promotion, that position, that whatever. You really have to kind of just put yourself out there, keep yourself professional at all times and just know in your heart, in your mind, um, on your vision board, what you want, what you're going to achieve. And I, I truly believe the universe will somehow bring it to you. It just sucks because I, like I said, put all my eggs in one basket and uh, wasn't a good idea to do that. So I don't know. I just felt like chatting about it because I feel like, especially with people that deal with anxiety, like myself, we tend to focus a lot on the negative and then it brings us back into that negative place. And that's where I, I was for a while. I was kind of like stuck there. But then I was like, no, you know what? Get out, go to the gym, work harder, push harder. You know, don't let people tear you down to make you feel like you're not worthy of something. Um, really quick, I'm gonna go in with a BH brush and this um, pretty color Ofala, which is more of like a hot orangey red. And I'm gonna mix it with the pink here. And this is a little bit more defining because it's a smaller tapered brush, but I wanna run this along the bottom lash line into that kind of pink and purple just to accentuate and brighten. Now I'm gonna take this smaller um, kind of eyeshadow brush. It's a very fine point, almost like concealer brush. And I'm gonna take this really pretty color in the Masquerade palette and it's more of like a white champagne color. And I wanna brighten the inside corner of my eye since we do have this really pretty gold, but I want a little bit more brightness. So on this brush, I'm gonna go into the tear duct and just kind of work this color into the inside corner here and even upwards in this area, just to kind of brighten that whole area. Okay, so I was gonna use my Chanel um, Soleil Tan, and I wanna pop this on, let's see, we'll use a Real Techniques brush since this is like the OG here, my buffing brush. And I'm gonna take this on a buffing brush and you'll see it's very pigmented. So I'm just gonna kinda of tap out the excess here. And holding my brush further back, I'm gonna apply this like I would contour. But because it's more of like a gel cream, I'm going to buff it as well. So you'll see like no dimension and then dimension. And you see how it warms up the entire face? And it's a soft enough color that to me it doesn't feel too orangey or too warm to where it looks streaky or dirty on the skin just really adds some dimension now you guys can see there's a lot more dimension on the face and it's warmed everything up we're not as pasty because i'm like almost like paper some days i'm so pale but and i actually buffed this into my hairline too i know it sounds like probably grody and dirt like dirty grody but yeah Okay, so now let's kick it up another notch. And to set this, I'm going to be using my Laura Mercier Rich Vanilla Powder. And I'm gonna take this on a more like duo fiber setting brush. So it's nice and gentle and not a whole lot of placement. But I'm gonna apply this a little bit more 
into the higher point of the cheekbone. So we're gonna cover a little bit of that, you know, contour shade, but we're also gonna come higher onto the cheekbone, like a true bronzing shade. And because this is in the warm family and my skin is more neutral, it's definitely adding warmth like a bronzer would. Um, so I'm using this mineral powder as a bronzer. However, it can be worn as a foundation as well, like a very sheer buildable coverage foundation. But I like to go um, into a little bit more warmth and go like a shade deeper than my skin tone and use it more to bronze. So it's like a natural bronze instead of a real orange kind of terracotta bronze. All right, so I'm gonna actually go off camera and do my eyebrows and my mascara and all that fun stuff. Um, and we'll meet back. But um, I'm going to use Stila today. I picked up the Stila, let's see, Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. And this is the Micro Tip, which I actually really like, but I do like the original formula as well. So I'm going to use a mixture of both of those as eyeliner today. And then for eyebrows, of course, my trusty Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is Brow Wiz. And I'm going to go a little bit lighter into a medium brown because I do have quite a bit of color going on. I still want definition, but I want it to be softer, my brows. And then for mascara, I got a sample of um, Dior's, um, let's see, Dior Show Mascara. So I'm going to work with that. So now I'm going to go finish and we will be back to complete the look. Okay guys, so this is the look as far as the brows and the liner and mascara. Um, I do have to say, I think I need a little more mascara. I like the Dior, um, but you know, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know if I'm cheap or if it's just that good, but I love my lash sensational from Maybelline. It, there's seriously like nothing like it to me. It curls, it lengthens, it separates for me, and it just gives me that really pretty, um, almost false lash look. Uh, but anyway, before we finish, I wanna go into my Bye Bye Pores blush. This is the Naturally Pretty, and it's a really soft, pinky, kind of almost corally, but more pinky. And I wanna add a pop of that to the apples of my cheeks. So I'm gonna put that on a BH blush brush. And this is very pigmented, so you always wanna make sure you really tap this out. And I'm gonna pop that on. You can already see like how pigmented it is. But yeah, you guys, so um, you know how we were like talking before about um, just jobs and everything. So while I'm like off camera going and doing the rest of my eye makeup, I get a call about um, another position that is now available. So you see like the universe works in the craziest ways and you'll get so worked up and so emotional about certain things that you can't control ultimately. And then somehow something works out. So, um, you know, is it my final destination stop? No, that's just life, you know, but, um, for a long time, I spent many years like not being able to handle that, you know, like just trying to fight the inevitable and, and fight change and fight what I couldn't control. And it just made me sick, literally. So it's crazy. But yeah, life is so strange sometimes. And honestly, I'm learning the importance of the little things and how to be just grateful for what you have. Um, and appreciating more and more of like what's in front of me than just worrying about what I don't have and what I need to get, what I want to get, you know? So. I bought this lip liner from La Mercy actually, um, hazelnut tea, so I think I'm gonna wear that because it's like just a perfect kind of nudie beigey color. And I think we're gonna just top that off with some gloss. Oh, now let's do gloss and a little bit of boy lipstick from ColourPop. So let me just sharpen this up real quick. And I prepped my lips with a little concealer already, so I'm just going to go ahead and start lining. It's a bar from the benefit line. But it feels blue sometimes. And this blood bleeds red like mine The grass is greener on the other side What I'm saying is we're all alive
like love this lip liner you guys I don't know this color in particular I love but also just this actual um, formulation it just goes on so smooth but it can get to like such a sharp point too to really um, create and define this is so pigmented that I'm actually just gonna pop some gloss on so I'm gonna use Wonderlust from the uh, Laura Mercier Bohem Chic collection this is one of my favorite glosses and it's the lip acrylic and it's just a beautiful kind of rose goldy neutrally pink gloss Okay guys, so this is the finished look and I absolutely love it. I think it is so flirty and fun and pretty and just fabulous. It has just enough glow, ton of warmth, ready for the end of spring, getting ready for summer. I feel like a creamsicle lollipop ice cream cone. I don't know, I just love it. Um, so anyway, just so you guys know, what I used at the end to fix my hair is the IGK No More Blow High Speed Air Dry um, Spray. And basically what you do is pop this cap off, you go section by section, and you're gonna spritz it into your hair. And if you're like me and you have waves and curls and frizz and you want something that's gonna really cut down the drying time, because especially if your hair is super porous, um, this is an awesome, awesome product to use. And it'll help do that and give you just a fun kind of spunky, different air dry finish. Really cool product, definitely recommend it. And no, I am not sponsored to tell you that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this get ready with me. As always, I had a ton of fun. Um, comment down below, give me a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Let me know what you guys want to see. Reach out to me, chit chat, you know I love that. Um, and yeah, until next time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.